Hello friends, Team HJ is back again with yet another video. The Indo-Russian Brahmo's story. The most crucial phase in developing a cruise missile for India came during the first Gulf War when American missiles which were Tomahawk cruise missiles crippled Iraq's command and communication centers. Then came the decision to develop an Indian cruise missile. In that war, few hundred cruise missiles could isolate the 1.2 million strong Iraqi military in the space of a few hours. This was a wake-up call for India's defense planners. In 1995, former President Mr. APJ Abdul Kalam asked Pillai, then the program director of IGMDP, to take charge as the CEO of an India-Russia joint venture to develop a brand new cruise missile for India. The team involved in the development of the cruise missile started looking at various options in terms of propulsion, guidance and control, seeker and configurations. NPOM, the legendary organization which developed iconic cruise missiles such as Malakit and Granite as well as ICBMs and spacecraft was chosen to work with DRDO on the future cruise missile. The decision was taken because NPOM was the assistant in the development of Akash surface-to-air missiles. They were very helpful in that project. In 1993, Pillai met the then Director General of NPOM. He revealed that the Germans had wanted to acquire the supersonic engine technology from Russia, but NPOM had rejected the idea. But India was a completely different story. India was a friend of Russia. Things now move quickly and an India-Russia joint feasibility team was set up. The team discovered that NPOM's new engine could be configured for supersonic flight if the two countries put together their technological assets. NPOM came up with the idea that they will provide knowledge and technology as their share to be valued at 50% of the total capital. The remaining 50% required for full development would come as hot currency from the Indian government. The shareholding was finally decided at 50.5% for DRDO and 49.5% for NPOM. Had DRDO's share been 51%, it would have become a public sector company falling under India's Defence Ministry. Thus, this strategic move paid dividend. Free of government interference, Brahmos is today regarded as the most dynamic armaments companies in India. Because of political turmoil in Russia during the 96 and 97, final clearance didn't come 
until August 1998 and it was only in the March of 1999 that a formal agreement was signed between the two countries although three valuable years were lost the DRDO and POM team wasn't sitting idle basic design and consultancy work took place using the staff assigned to the company by the parent organizations The friendship between Kalam and the NPOM director Yefremo and their belief in their respective teams was a key factor here. Yefremo's academic stature and his role as a renowned rocket designer helped remove roadblocks and suspicions in the Russian bureaucracy. On the Indian side, Kalam never turned down any of Pillai's proposals. Similarly, when Kalam forwarded a proposal to Prime Minister Rao, the file came back with his approval the same day. Brahmo's project has set the bar for Make in India. If PM Modi wants to make Make in India a success, he has to replicate the Brahmos model again and again. If you want to watch more videos on India or global defense and strategic affairs, please subscribe to Hindu Judaic. Thanks for watching. Here are the links of our website, Facebook page and Twitter.